Katie Bowman here with Plants for Human Health Institute. Today I'm going to be starting some microgreens. So let's look at what we need to do microgreens. So first I'm going to need some containers. I have just gathered up some old containers. These were takeout containers or things that I bought at the grocery store. This is just one of these little containers you can get at the deli. As you can see I have poked a few holes in it. I also have this. This is one that I use for meal prep. Again, poked some holes in it. I need some seeds. So I have specifically got some microgreen mixes, but that's not necessary. You can use old seeds that you want to get rid of. You think might be a little bit old and not sure how well they'll germinate. Great way to test them out. You can use things that right now you really can't plant outside. It's a little bit hot right now to do broccoli, cauliflower, kale, any of those radishes, but they make great microgreens. Uh, I have some pea seeds. I'm going to try these. Pea tendrils are great in a salad. And I have some Swiss chard. So this is what I'm going to be using today to plant some microgreens. We'll also need some sort of planting medium. It does not have to be potting soil. It can, but it's not really necessary. I'm going to use this mix right here. This is just a seed starting mix. This is made up of coconut core, which is just ground coconut husks. You can also buy coconut core in a brick. Fairly cheap, you can find this on the internet or find it in any of your local gardening stores. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is fill our containers with this potting medium. So I'm just gonna get a few scoops. Does not have to be terribly deep. These, um, these will not take very long to grow, therefore their roots won't get, gonna get too big. So I'm just gonna put about three scoops in each of these containers. That one's good. So I have my containers filled now, um, so I'm just going to smooth out the surface of the medium. Just smooth that out. And as you can see, I just have this with, with, this is just the potting medium in there. I'm putting it on the lid so that it doesn't make a big mess in my kitchen right now. All right, next step, we're just gonna put the seeds on there. So I'm gonna start with this. This is a spicy mix, so it probably has some radish, some arugula, anything like that that might have a little spice to it. Uh, this is a pretty big bag of seeds. You do need more seeds for microgreens than you would normally use for planting because we're not worried about space. The microgreens will take about seven to 10 days to be ready to harvest, so we want them pretty thick. We're just going to use them that way. So I'm just going to pour it out into my hand and then scatter them on top here. So I'm just scattering them on top and I'm getting a pretty good coating on the surface. Again, we don't have to worry about them having enough space because they're only going to be going for about a week to 10 days. Now, maybe hard for you to see, but you can see that I've scattered them all over the surface. And this was my spicy mix. So I'm gonna make sure that I label this one. I'll set it down. And this one is going to be my mild mix. So this one will probably be kale and cabbage, maybe broccoli, cauliflower seeds would be in this. Some maybe some of the lettuces are in this. Again, I'm just gonna pour it into my hand and just sprinkle it on top here making sure that I'm, for the most part, quite covering the whole surface, but that I'm pretty well covering that surface. So there's that one. Set that one down and go ahead and put my plant tag. This is my mild mix, so I don't want to get these two mixed up. Now in this one, I am going to try peas. I've grown peas out in my garden before, but I've not grown them as microgreens. So this will be a good experiment for me as well. So I'm just gonna open this packet. 
And with the peas, instead of them laying just on top like the other ones did, I want them to get down under the surface a little better so that they will stay moist during that germination period. Most of your things like your brassicas, your broccoli, your cauliflower kale, things like that, they really need a little bit of light to germinate, but peas don't. So I'm gonna scatter them on the surface and then I'm going to add one more scoop of the potting medium right over the top so that the seeds are covered. So again, I've not done this one before. It'll be a great experiment. We'll check back in a few days and see how they're doing. But I do love pea tendrils on a salad. Okay, so now I've got my label. That one's gonna go right in here. And for the last one, I am going to do some Swiss chard. Now with the Swiss chard, I've had these seeds around for for quite a while, and I'm not sure how, mel how well they're gonna germinate because they're a little bit old. But what I can do is use them as microgreens. I'll be planting a lot of them. And with these, I'm gonna scatter them on the surface and do just like I did with the peas. So just kind of pour them on there. As you can see, I've got a pretty good thick layer there. And I'm going to add another little scoop of the potting mix right over top so it just covers it. These seeds are not very big, so it doesn't have to be, they don't have to be very deep. And label this one as well so I remember what's what. And then the last step we need to do to all of these is we need to water them in. We need to make sure that they stay nice and moist throughout the whole germination process. So I have a little squirt bottle here. I forgot that on my materials list. And I am just going to give it a good spray. Good spray. Now my potting medium was fairly moist to begin with, so I don't have to worry about too much. Um, I'll do a little bit more with the chard and the peas, since those have another layer of soil on top. So I think I've got that one good. I'll set it aside. And let's take one of my mixes and just spray it in. I just wanna make sure that it gets good and moist, good and wet on top. And I will probably do this once or twice a day. Every time I walk by, just give them a little spritz, make sure that they stay moist during the whole germination process. Now, how long do you think the germination process is gonna take for these? This should take really only about two or three days and you'll start seeing these germinate. You'll start seeing them come up and little, little plants will start growing. Your little seedlings will grow. And again, with the great thing about microgreens is they have a really quick payoff. In about a week to 10 days, you'll be able to harvest these, put them on a salad, put them in a smoothie, or just munch on them. Um, one of the other great benefits about growing microgreens, other than the fact that they're really fast to grow, is what normally, all the nutrients that normally go into that full plant are concentrated in that little small seedling. So some of the research says they're about nine times as nutritious as their uh, full, full grown counterparts. So we can get all the goodness of the broccoli and the cauliflower and the kale and those small little microgreens. I'm going to take my last one. These are my peas. Make sure that I get them nice and moist. And then all I have to do is set them in a sunny window. I'm actually using my, my kitchen lights. I have un lights underneath my cabinets, and so I'm going to be using those as my light source to grow my microgreens. And we'll check back in a few days to see how they're doing. Look how lush and full those are. And again, these are extremely nutritious. These are just fantastic for you. Um, they're great in a salad. I like to put them on sandwiches or just munch on them. They're good with that. And I've, I've already cut, you can see I cut into some because I had some on a salad yesterday. But all I have to do in order to harvest these is give them a little haircut. I'm gonna move the camera down just so you can see that instead of me. And I'm just giving them a little haircut right here. And all of these can now go on my salad or on a sandwich, or I can just eat them. And they are really, really yummy. And I sowed the seeds thick enough that once I cut these, there'll probably be some left in there that haven't germinated and they will start to germinate as well. And I will continue to see these grow.